Hello, you are Christine, right? My name is Hallie. I met you and Charles arm in arm at the wedding dress shop on the East Square on Thursday. I'm the woman in the checkered dress and said hello to him. Hello, of course I remember. It happened only two days ago. After returning that day, Charles told me you were an old friend. I apologize for not greeting you properly that day. Old friend? Looks like Charles still wants to hide me from you. I'm not his old friend. I'm Hallie now, but three years ago, I was Hallie Smith. So, you're Charles' ex-wife. Didn't matter to me that he didn't explain it to me. Maybe he just felt it wasn't that important. So, Miss Hallie, what do you need from me? I just want to congratulate you because you're getting married to my former husband. He is a very nice person. When we were together, he always said he loved me every day and took care of me tenderly. We have known each other since high school. He and I were one of the most famous couples in school at the time. At the time we got married, anyone looking at us could be envious of our lives. We broke up because of some misunderstanding, but I'm sure he still loves me. Hallie, I don't quite understand why you mentioned these things. You and Charles may have had a good time in the past, but the person beside him right now is me. We've known each other for two years and recently decided to get married in two months. Nothing can change that. If you want to, you can come to our wedding in two months. I would be very pleased to welcome you if you come with your blessing. How confident you are. You have no idea what he and I had together. And also Melina, our baby girl. You know how much he loves Melina and his love for her mother is no less. I've never seen any pictures of you in Charles' house, so I didn't recognize you when I met you at the bridal shop. However, I've heard Charles tell stories about you. It was you who abandoned him to marry a new man. Am I right? Charles once told me in a drunken stupor, with extreme fatigue, how terrible and difficult it was for him. He even abandoned Melina when she was only a year and a half years old. Charles had to overcome the pain of betrayal from his beloved wife, while at the same time working hard and taking care of his poor daughter. After all you've done to him, do you think he still loves you, Hallie? At the time, I was just impulsive, and I regret it now. In the last few days, I felt so much for Charles and my Melina. I believe he still loves me because we swore before God to love each other for the rest of our lives. But you broke that vow, remember? And do you think that after all this time of separation, my daughter will accept you? Ridiculous! Melina is my daughter, not yours. You have to know that nothing can beat blood ties. Don't even try to replace me. It was Melina who voluntarily called me mom. Ever since Charles and I were together, I've been coming to take care of Melina often. We became very close to each other. She calls me mother and always hugs me to make up for the time in their childhood that lacked motherly love. I love her like my own child. No matter what happens, you won't be able to separate us. Why are you so brazen? You want to rob the husband and daughter of a woman who has lost everything? You are young and have many choices. Why do you insist on choosing Charles, a man who used to be married? I completely decline your request. Our relationship is very good and we are perfect for each other. And why are you trying to convince me to give up Charles? You are his ex-wife, Hallie. You and him divorced three years ago, and I only came to him after that. What I did was not against the law or my conscience. I was the one who helped him through that difficult time. I helped him arrange the house and took care of his daughter. I'm fully qualified to create a new family with him. You have no right to question me or interfere with our happiness, Miss Hallie. No, you're completely wrong. You can't force things that already have an owner. Before I have to do something, I advise you to withdraw voluntarily. All I want is my family and my happiness back. I'm trying to talk to you as softly as possible. Why don't you understand, Hallie? You're the one who is stubborn about things that don't belong to you. God gave you a chance to be happy and you denied it. I think what you need to do now is to find new happiness and not cling to the past. I know I said earlier that I would be happy to welcome you to our wedding, but now I'm taking back those words. You shouldn't appear at our wedding in any way. What right do you have to ban me? I am Charles's wife and Melina's mother. I am totally free to attend if I wish. However, you know, there's not going to be a wedding. 
I will take back the happiness that belongs to me. I will take back my husband and my daughter. I've warned you again, Christine. If you don't back off, I'm not sure I'll be able to make concessions to you. What you said is ridiculous, you know? Listen, I don't have any time to spend on you anymore. I have to take Melina to her grandparents' house. She should never see you again. She's already suffered enough. I hope you'll spend your time doing something more valuable than this silly argument. Goodbye, Hallie. Hi, Christine. Guess what I did today? I went to my old house, grateful that he still lives in that house full of memories. He really can't forget me. I was there all day, making some cookies with milk for Melina. Even though she's a little worried since she's never met me, I can still feel the connection between us. You lost Charles. He still loves me. Do you know how his eyes trembled when he opened the door and saw me there? You can't beat me, Christine. Charles is mine. What? You came to Charles' house today? I never heard him say anything about this. Oh, maybe he didn't want you to be too shocked. What's wrong with me visiting my husband and daughter? I simply chatted with Charles, showed my love to him, and reminisced about old things. What did you do that for? That was three years ago, and other than reminding him of the pain he suffered, visiting him makes no sense at all. You said you love Charles, but why would you make him suffer again? I didn't want to make him suffer. I'm trying to make up for him, do you understand? What you're doing is really pointless because right now, I'm the only one Charles loves. Maybe he'll forgive you because he doesn't want to live in hatred. However, it's impossible that he will go back to you. You hypocrite. I'm sure you're mad right now because I beat you right. You were frantically thinking of a way to win him back, but you cannot, Christine. Excuse me, you're being rude to me. I have no intention of competing with you, but don't think I'll let you mess around. Oh, is that so? What do you think you can do, clinging to a little bit of Charles' affection? Have you ever wondered if Charles really loves you, or simply because he wants to give Melina a mother who can take care of her? You're just one of his makeshift options, Christine. Currently, Melina's real mother has returned and wants to make up for it. He won't need you anymore, Christine. I advise you to retreat quickly to save some face for yourself. These are not things that are in your control, you know. I will only leave when I hear Charles say so with my own ears. And you think Charles would want his daughter to be exposed to a mother who betrayed her father and abandoned her when she was a baby? When you abandoned Malina, did you ever think about what kind of circumstances she would have to grow up in? Huh? Do you imply that I'm a terrible mom? I do love Malina, and I never stopped thinking about her even for one second during the last three years. So, why didn't you come back to visit that little girl once? During her childhood, there was no sign of you. The person who has been by her side and taking care of her for the past two years is me. The person who dressed her up in a new dress, took her by the hand to school, took her to the amusement park and taught her to sing baby songs, was me, not you. You have no right to expect her to accept you. So what? You're also just an outsider, like a nanny or something like that. Melina will soon forget about you after I take care of her. What can a child perceive? She's also not your biological child. Why should you be so stubborn? She's not my child, but she and I have the most sacred feelings for each other. There are some people, like you, who work hard to have children, but also ruthlessly throw them away to fulfill their selfish desires. How dare you call me that? Melina is my daughter and how I treat her has nothing to do with you. I will soon make peace with Charles and we will live together happily. Actions speak louder than words. I completely trust Charles and his feelings for me because we have overcome many difficulties in life together. He shared about the trauma he went through and he also gave me a sense of trust when I was with him. His parents are also very fond of me. We often visit and spend cozy quality time together. Through all of that, I'm fully confident that I will always have the upper hand in this fight. Oh, is that so? Maybe you don't know today Charles also gave me an extremely beautiful necklace. It's very luxurious and expensive, and the only reason Charles gave it to me was because he still loves me so much. How can- I don't believe it. Did he give it to you personally? Of course. With an affectionate gesture, he put his arm around my neck to put the necklace on me, and he told me, you are so beautiful. 
I felt like we went back to the day we danced together in the high school hall. That day, he also put his arm around my waist and looked deeply into my eyes. I won't believe it unless I hear Charles himself say it. If he really did give you that necklace, I'll back off and give you to my blessing. I advise you not to ask him. He's a nice man, so maybe he wouldn't long to say bad words to you. You should face the truth and accept to give up. That will save some face for yourself. For some reason, I couldn't call Charles. Maybe he's busy dealing with something important so he turned off his phone. I'm currently on a business trip in another city, so I can't go see him right away. However, as soon as I return, I'll clarify this matter with him. <laughs> you are so naive. He loves me back, therefore surely the only reason he turned off his phone is because he doesn't want to talk to you anymore. Don't try to use those words to divide our love. I myself know what I need to do to solve this problem. Hallie, are you there? I just returned home today. I went over to the house and spoke directly to Charles. He was avoiding me. Did you really go there? Why are you so stubborn? Seeing is believing. I just want to believe what I actually see. And what did you hear? I'm sure Charles doesn't want to hurt you, so don't force him. You're right. He doesn't want to hurt me. But that's because he did absolutely nothing wrong with me. You said Charles gave you a necklace, didn't you? Oh, right. That necklace represents his heart for me. I absolutely love it and I consider it the most precious treasure of my life. So, why did that necklace show up at the pawn shop? It's your precious gift, isn't it? So why did you bring it to hold? How do you know it's that necklace? It could just be an identical one. Don't you dare lie to me, Hallie. Because underneath every gem on the necklace, there are my engraved initials. Surely you don't know this. That necklace was originally a gift Charles ordered for me. He showed me the blueprint for that necklace a few months ago. I've double checked it. The day you brought it in to pick it up was right after the day you stopped by Charles' house. It also doesn't say anything. Maybe that necklace was originally made for you, but because he loves me, he gave it to me. As for why it showed up at the pawn shop, it was just a misunderstanding. The other day, my close friend came to borrow a large amount of money because she was really in trouble. However, because I'm investing in a project, I don't have the money right now. Therefore, I had to take the necklace to the pawn shop. It's mine anyway, I have the right to do anything with it. Oh, you still dare to say it's yours. If Charles gave it to you, why did Melina tell me she saw you rummaging through a drawer? Charles didn't give it to you. You stole it yourself. He was being strange with me because he realized he had lost the necklace and was afraid I would be upset about it. We talked very clearly. He admitted he didn't want me to know you were bothering him because he didn't want me to be bothered by it. He swears to God that he absolutely loves and wants to marry me. No, he actually gave it to me. I just checked the drawer to find some other stuff. Don't try to cover up. I also know why I can't contact him. That's because you used his phone to block me. Charles told me he wanted to go to the restroom during our conversation and left his phone on the table. And while his phone screen wasn't turned off, he took it and blocked my phone number. Right? Besides, I know the reason you brought the necklace to the pawn shop. You're in debt. A huge debt, aren't you? I learned a bit about your life, Hallie. You investigated me? How dare you? I didn't do anything illegal. I just found out about some of your recent work. You're in debt. Pretty big one, aren't you? How can you know that? You don't know my profession, do you? I'm a banker, Hallie. Due to a job rotation, I've had to accept a lot of new client applications recently. And guess what? There's your information in it. About a few months ago, you borrowed a very large amount of money, and it was about time to repay it. Huh? I don't know what you're talking about. If I'm not mistaken, you approached Charles simply because you wanted to use his assets to pay off this debt. And you've only come up with this plan since you saw us as a wedding dress shop, right? If you really wanted to make up for him and your daughter, you would have appeared earlier. Not at this time when you were about to pay a debt. No, you are totally wrong. I really just want to go back and make up for Charles and Melina. Up to this point, are you still trying to make excuses, Hallie? It wasn't good for you to try to get in between me and Charles, 
But how many times worse was it for you to try to take advantage of Malina? My little girl was already very pitiful. She had to live without her mother's love all her childhood years. I don't want her to suffer from being used and betrayed by her own mother again. As a mother, instead of bringing happiness to your child, you want to take advantage of her? Okay, I admit it. I did intend to take advantage of Charles and my daughter, but I'm just a victim. The man who seduced me back then was an asshole who only came to me for money. After taking all my money, he left me without hesitation. That jerk, after losing his business, took all my assets and left me with a debt beyond my ability to pay. I don't have any income at all. Why don't you find a job? Aren't you young and healthy enough to work? I can't. I have never worked before. From my childhood until I married Charles, I always lived a full life with the support of my parents. After they passed away last year, they let me inherit their entire estate. Stupidly, I brought money to live with that bastard and he cheated everything. For the past few months, I've been living with the help of friends, but they can't help me forever. I also don't want to get involved in lowly hard work. You're beyond cure. Have you been relying on and taking advantage of others your whole life? Just seems like I'm begging you. Right now, only Charles can save me. Please leave him to me, as if you pity me. I will be grateful to you for the rest of my life. How can you be so brazen? Do you still intend to take advantage of your ex-husband when you are qualified to work? I beg you, Christine. If you don't accept it, I will disturb you for the rest of your life. I will never leave you alone. Do you know how much the necklace you stole is worth? Enough to put you in jail if I sue you. You dare? Please, please don't do that. I probably won't go through with it, but you must stay away from Charles and Melina. You can't bother them anymore. I don't want Melina to suffer any more pain knowing she had a terrible mother. Christine, my debt is coming up and if I can't pay it, I'll go to jail. Please help me. I have nowhere to go. I became very panicky and I haven't had a night of peace. After all the things you did to me, why should I help you? You don't understand. You are living a very happy life. You were about to marry Charles. Why isn't that me? Why do you deserve all this? Nothing comes naturally, Holly. I made a lot of effort to come to where I am now. I did my best to help Charles through the most difficult time of his life. I learned how to take care of children, while not having given birth to take care of Melina like she was my own daughter. I totally deserve it. And Hallie, have you really tried? During your time of debt, did you try to find yourself a job? Or are you just thinking of conspiracies to take advantage of your former husband and daughter? But my husband and daughter belong to me. It's all because of you. Because of you that I became like this. Listen, Hallie. As a woman, you need to lead an independent life. You can't just live it to fate and take whatever it brings you with little effort. I understand you as a woman, but I absolutely cannot just hand you over my happiness. So what should I do? The term of the debt is not long anymore. It's not something for me to worry about. It's your business, and you need to deal with it yourself. Don't expect anyone else to help you anymore. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, Christine. You have to help me. I will really go to jail. Christine! After the messages that day, I blocked Hallie. Although she refused to give up and kept coming to our house to annoy us, she kept banging on our door at night and left carcasses of small animals in front of the house. To prevent Melina from panicking, we had to take her to her grandparents' house. The most terrible thing is that she even tried to break into our house. We decided to take Callie to court for trespassing. She was jailed for at least a year and fined $5,000. I married Charles as planned. Our wedding went very smoothly. In accordance with my wishes, the wedding was held at a luxury seaside restaurant with a main blue-white color scheme. Along with the melodious music, Melina toddled over with the ring box in her small hands. Charles took the ring from her and kissed her cheek, then slowly put the ring on my finger. We swore the most solemn vows and gave each other a sweet kiss. Our whole family of three is living together very harmoniously happy. A year after getting married, I found out I was pregnant with a baby boy. As soon as I heard the news, my reaction was to reassure little Melina. 
I didn't want her to worry about being abandoned once she had the little brother. I gave her kisses and sweet words. And how nice. Melina understood what I was trying to tell her. The little girl grinned and replied that she was looking forward to the birth of her brother. Eight months later, I gave birth to a healthy baby boy and named him David. David has my eyes, but his face is a copy of Charles. Charles was overjoyed. David grew up smart. He was very polite and loved his sister, Melina. Melina is also very fond of her younger brother. She used to hold David's hand and teach him to sing children's songs. Our house is always filled with the laughter of our two children.